let's spend a few minutes talking about how we convert um, inequalities in C to MIPS. And so by inequalities, I want to be able to convert something like if i is less than j, i is greater than j, less than or equal to, um, or greater than or equal to. Alright, so that would be the last one. Did I include that? Let's put that here. So uh, if, um, if i is greater than or equal to j. So I click here about the test. And this could be anything else, just some series of operations. Um, because we can do that test, right? If we can do the conditional check here, then I can certainly change this if statement rather easily to a while so that we can do while loops, do while loops, for loops um, that have this test for inequality. So let's jump into this. The um, instructions that we're going to use, the MIPS instructions, will be the set on less than. Right? So we're going to use the set on less than and if we have any immediate value, then it would be a set on less than with an i. And by an immediate value, it would mean that the test would look something like this. If i is less than or equal to an immediate value versus some value that might be inside of a register. So if it's a hard-coded number, then we're going to use SLTI. In the way set on less than works, it's going to set its first argument to either a 1 or a 0 based on um, whether or not S1, the first register, is less than S2. And so you should look at it like this. If S1 is less than S2, if that's true, then T0 equals a 1. If true, otherwise t0 equals a 0 if false. So that's how we're going to use this. Let's get rid of that. <coughs> um, we're also going to take advantage um, of the fact that um, sometimes our test will be, say, something like this. Um, if it's something like this, if i is greater than or equal to j might be something that we want to test. Well, we don't have, we're not going to use the pseudo instructions. There is a branch if greater than or equal to but even that is a pseudo instruction. Um, and so you're going to, I'm going to ask you to use set on less than and make modifications based on that. So if you want to do a check on this, a um, couple of ways of doing it. Um, if i is greater than or equal to j, the opposite of that is that i is less than j. So that's the opposite. Um, and so we're going to use this where we have a strictly less than. Um, because we have only a set on less than. We don't have the ability Unless we, write, unless we write multiple lines of code to do um, something like where we look to see, let's write this in reverse, j less than um, i, and then we also do 
another check to see if j is equal to i. So we could do a couple of checks. So maybe in another session we'll do that, but for right now I'm just going to use kind of this reverse logic, and I'll show you what that looks like. The first one is pretty straightforward. If i is less than j, um, then we want to do something, which in this case is just going to be a simple increment. So. What I want to do is do the test to see if i, which is the s1, is less than j, s2, and store the result, either a 1 or a 0, into t0. Um, if, uh, let's see, which one do we want to use here? Let's try this way. If this is true, i is less than j, then we want to do the next line of code. If this is not true, meaning the test gives us a zero, then we just want to jump out and get outside of this. We don't want to do the next line of code. So if this is not true, all right, so that's equivalent to saying that if, um, T0 ends up being a 0. So that's register 0, which contains a 0. So if this is not true, or T0 ends up with a 0, then we want to just exit and get out. So I'll say exit, or maybe label 1 um, down here somewhere. So if it's not true, we don't want to do anything. We just want to jump out. Otherwise, we would go ahead and do the next line of code, which would be I++ in this case. And then continue on downward. So that would be the first translation. For the next one, um, it's a strict inequality, and we're looking to see if I is greater than J. Um, equivalent to saying i greater than j is to say that j is strictly less than i. So, right, um, 5 is greater than 2. If we swap them, we also have to reverse the inequality. 2 is less than 5. Um, so what we have is a, a strict inequality. So j less than. So let's go ahead and do the test to see if j is less than i. So the test is set t0. If j, which in this case is an s1, um, or s2 rather, If j is less than i, right? So that matches what we see here. So if j is less than i, then we want to go ahead and do the increment. If j, if that's false, um, if j is not less than i, then we want to bail out. So if we end up getting a value of t0 that's equal to 0, then we want to bail out. Otherwise, we want to do the increment. And so we'll do the increment like this, s1, s1, and 1. Finally, the last two. They're not strict inequalities. They are um, a little bit more challenging. Um, 
So let's do those. Let's do those next. Uh, let's see, do we have time? Yes, we do. Let's go ahead and do those. <coughs> So we don't have a set on less than or equal to, um, at least there's not a true 32-bit MIPS instruction. Um, we have pseudo instructions that would do this for us, branch of less than or equal to, but we don't have true instructions, so we still have to use the set on less than. What's going to help is if you take the logic of an i less than or equal to j, um, the opposite of that is i greater than j, right? Um, if you think about numbers in order, and if you think about, let's say, i is less than or equal to 4, for example, less than or equal to would be that set greater than would be everything else. So those two are opposite. They complement one another to make up the entire set. Less than or equal to is the opposite of greater than. So let's see what we can do with this. Um, so this is the test that we're going to use. And that test is the same as this right here, as we saw in the previous um, example. So if that proves to be true, right, if j is less than i, if this proves to be true, um, then we have to make a decision. So let's go ahead and do a test on that. We're going to do a set on less than. And for that test, um, set on less than t0. And then let's go ahead and do the comparison. So we're looking to see if j is less than i. So that's an s2, s1. And then, as is typically the case with these inequalities, you're going to have to do a branch. So the set on less than and branches are going to be paired up. It's going to be a BEQ or a BNE. In this case, even though there are at least two ways of doing this, I'm going to try to um, write this in a way that has the most concise code. So if i is less than j, if that's true, then we want to do the increment. If this is not true, right? If this is not true, such, such that i is greater than j. Um, if i is greater than j, then you don't want to do the loop. So if i is greater than j, um, then we don't want to do the loop. So, so we're checking to see if i greater than j is 1, because if that's the case, we don't want to go into the loop. And one way to check to see if that result is equal to 1 is to see if it's not equal to 0. That's how we check um, to see if that result is equal to 1. So you're going to see this pattern um, where I do something like this, B and E. 0. This is the same thing as saying branch 
if equal to um, 1. So to not be 0 means that t0 is equal to a 1. Since we don't have a hard-coded 1 in a register, um, we can just use um, the B and E with a 0. Um, you can also do something else. You could do a, a value where you loaded a 1 in. It will take a few more lines of code, but we'll just work with what we have here. So let's go back. Branch if not equal to 0. Um, if that's the case, then we want to exit. And from here afterwards, the next line was that we would do an increment i++. plus plus s1, s1, and 1. And then exit. So it's a little bit tricky logic. The logic was to check to see if j is um, first. Let's go back. We wanted to know if i is greater than j, or if i is less than or equal to j. And if that's true, then we want to do it. If it's not true, right? If it's not true, then we want to bail out. Meaning, if i um, is greater than j, then we want to bail out. So, and then we went ahead and checked that condition where we looked at i and j to see if i is greater than j. And if we said if that was true, um, then, right, if that result is 1, then we wanted to bail out. And this part here checks to see if the result is 1. If it is 1, then we want to exit. Otherwise, we continue on. So it's a little bit of backwards logic. Um, there's more than one way to do this. But let's just um, maybe look at other examples at another time. So those are the, um, or at least those, are th those lines of code will get you an answer. There's more than one way. But let's look at another problem. If i is greater than or equal to j, i plus plus. Um, the opposite of that is um, if i is less than j, then don't do the increment. So we're looking to see if i is, is greater than j, and we're looking to see if that's true. If that is true, all right, then what do you want to do? That means we want to um, skip over the i++. plus plus. So if i is greater than or equal to j, i++. plus plus. If i is less than j, then we want to skip the increment. So the code for that, let's first do the test. Where we're going to set t0. And we're going to look at our strict inequality. And we're looking at i and comparing it to j. Um, and what I'm going to do is check to see if that result is equal to 1. And so we have a shortcut for checking to see if the result is equal to 1. We do that by checking to see if it's not 0. So again, if it is equal to 1, we're going to skip. And that's what we do. If it's equal to 1, which is what this does, then we're going to skip the increment and exit out. Otherwise, let's go ahead and do the increment. Um, S1, S1, and 1. So those are four key tests that you want to be able to do. So take a look at those and get a little bit of practice. Um, and the trickiest 
um, certainly would be this kind of backwards logic here where we're checking to see if our test is equal to 1. And we do that by looking to see if it's not equal to 0. Uh, 